everyone. I'm so glad that you're here today because today is our final week celebrating our BC Kids block party. We've been having a party all month long because we think friendship is worth celebrating. Friendship is using your words and your actions to show others that you care. The best thing about BC Kids and, and the Block Party is that everyone's invited. We've got music, dancing, and of course, lots of games. You know, one of my favorite games is freeze tag. Have you ever played freeze tag? So a game I want you to try this week is called Friendship Freeze, and it's really similar to freeze tag. So this week, maybe try to play a game with your neighbors or your siblings. Um, and see what you can do. Now, friendship freeze is a little bit different than freeze tag. In friendship freeze, when you, um, first of all, you have to walk, okay? So you find a nice place in the yard, you walk around, okay? And if you get tagged, you're frozen. In order for someone to untag you, okay, they bump your elbow like this, okay? And before you can get unfrozen, you have to give them a compliment. So you have to say, oh, I really like your beautiful eyes or that shirt looks so nice on you. So give it a try this week. How cool is a game that you get to have fun and pay each other compliments? You know, besides freeze tag, something that I really, really enjoy doing is worship. And I like worshiping with you. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right. I'll see you in a few minutes. Jesus, you have been so faithful. Jesus, you have been so true. I will be forever thankful because I never had a friend like you. Help me to be who you've been to me. Everyone I see Let us love one another with that love like no other yet That's the way you love us, God Never turn away, you are with us every day, yeah That's the way you love us, God Your love is always been beginning to end There's never been a better friend, so You with me in the darkest valley You with me on the mountaintop I'm thankful that you never leave me And that your love will never stop Help me to be who you've been to me To everyone I see Let us love one another with that love like no other yet That's the way you love us, God Never turn away, 
next week and I'm not actually cooking anything right now <laughs> I'm inside that would be a cook in <laughs> so I've never really cooked from any of my friends before so I just wanted to be prepared because I want them to still be my friends after the cookouts over just kidding that's not how friendship works friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care I don't think friends should stop being friends for little things like food tasting bad. Mmm, oh, it's delicious. And I think you can even stay friends with someone if they say, accidentally burn you with a hot potato. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato, ha, 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 ha. Friendship can last through most anything. Unless a friend makes fun of my hat, then it's over. Time to flip an imaginary burger. <sighs> Woo! Today's story is about a time when one of Jesus' friends did something really bad. Jesus could have flipped out. <laughs> but he didn't do that. He didn't do that. I'll see you soon. Oh, um, let's see. Uh, can't turn the camera off with the mitts. Sorry. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Peter hauled in the knotted net yet again as the first light of dawn gleamed in the eastern sky. Empty. Not a single fish all night. Thomas shook his head. Uh, I doubt we'll catch a thing before it's time to take the boat in. John studied Peter thoughtfully. Peter, you didn't really want to catch fish anyway, did you? You just wanted to get out in the boat and do something normal. Peter shrugged, but he knew John was right. Over the past few weeks and months, everything in his life had turned upside down. First, Peter had shown the courage to speak the truth about his friend Jesus. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Many people wanted to make Jesus king, even though the religious leaders hated him. The day before Jesus was killed, Peter had promised Jesus that he would follow him anywhere and even give up his life for Jesus. But that very evening, Jesus was arrested. Peter was so scared he told three different people he wasn't Jesus' friend. I don't know that man. Peter felt sick about what he'd done, especially when Jesus was nailed to the cross and died. But then he returned to life. He appeared to his friends. It was amazing. Incredible! Everyone was excited beyond belief. Except, Peter must have wondered. Is Jesus mad at me? Am I still his friend? Does he still love me? Now Peter found himself in the boat, trying to figure it all out. His fingers tightened on the wet rope as he prepared to cast the net one more time. As he glanced over on the shoreline, he saw a figure standing there. Friends, don't you have any fish? Nope, not one. Throw your net on the right side of the boat. There you will find some fish. The seven disciples in the boat exchanged glances as Thomas laughed. I seriously doubt it. You guys have anything better to do? Let's give it a try. Together, the men heaved the heavy wet net back into the sea on the other side. Hey, I think we've got something. Bring it on in. There's one fish. Two fish. A red fish. Ugh. A blue fish. And another one. And another... Uh, Ten. Whoa! 
Need some help here. The net was so full of fish, they couldn't haul it into the boat. They began towing it to shore. John gaped at the man still standing on the beach. It's the Lord. Excitement raced through Peter's veins. He was about to see Jesus again. But just as quickly, guilt gnawed at his stomach. Facing Jesus meant he had to face how he denied knowing Jesus. But it's Jesus. I've got to see him no matter what. Grabbing his coat, Peter jumped out of the boat and into the water. He half ran and half waded to the beach when he discovered that Jesus started a small bonfire. Fish and bread were already toasting over the flames. He's got sun and he's making breakfast for us. Jesus smiled at Peter. Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Uh, yes, Lord. Peter ran back to the lappy water to help his friends haul their fish to shore. 153. You counted? Don't doubt it. Jesus gestured to the disciples to join him around the fire. Come and have breakfast. As the disciples gathered, Jesus offered them bread to eat. John whispered to Peter. This is what he did when we last ate together at the Passover meal. When breakfast finished, the disciples rose to take care of their fish. Peter found himself walking beside Jesus. There were so many things he wanted to say, but he couldn't find the words. Simon Peter, do you really love me more than these others do? Peter swallowed hard. Surely Jesus knew what he felt. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Peter remembered how Jesus would compare people to sheep in his stories. Peter, do you really love me? Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. Sheep? People. Peter waited in his mind. Jesus must be telling Peter to take care of the people who had followed him. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Just as Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, he now confirmed three times that he loved Jesus. What's more, Jesus wanted Peter to go out and share that love with others. He's forgiven me, even after what I did. Peter, things are going to get even more difficult for you. You are going to be led places you do not want to go. Peter slowly nodded his head. He was willing to do anything Jesus asked of him. Follow me. Yes, Lord, I will. Because Jesus had forgiven him, Peter was now free to share the love of God with those around him without carrying around a heavy load of guilt. Okay, so picture this. You have a best friend. You do everything together. You eat together. You play games together. You tell each other everything. And then when your life gets really hard and you need your friend there the most, your friend pretends she doesn't even know you. That's not cool, friend. Wouldn't that make you so mad? It would make me want to say goodbye to that friend forever. But Jesus didn't do that when Peter pretended not to know him. Instead, even though he must have felt so hurt inside, Jesus forgave Peter. Now, I know what you may be thinking. It was pretty cool for Jesus to forgive Peter like that. It was. But guess what? Jesus forgives you and me like that too. Anytime we mess up, we break a rule, or we do something we know is wrong, Jesus forgives us. That's because he loves us so much and because our relationship is more important to him than our mess ups. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. Friends, forgive one another. Jesus forgives us, so we should forgive others. Our friendships should be more important than our mess ups. I'm not saying it's easy to forgive. It's not. You're going to need God's help, but get this. When you choose to forgive, it can help you feel better inside. It can help your friend feel better inside, and it'll make your cookouts way more enjoyable. <gasps> Speaking of, this imaginary corn is almost done roasting. Oh, look at that. Oh, what? Oh, this is gonna taste so good when they're real. Goodbye, everybody. Again with the mitts. Wasn't that a great time of worship? You know, in Psalms 40 and 5, David wrote these words, Lord my God, no one can compare to you. You have done many wonderful things. You have planned to do these things for us. There are too many of them for me to even talk about. You know, isn't that amazing that we're able to worship God through song? Um, to thank Him for all the wonderful things that He does for us. 
I just find that to be one of the most amazing things that we can do. God loves to listen to our voices and God loves um, to hear that in song. So let's talk about that story. You see, when Jesus forgave Peter, he made sure that Peter knew that they were still friends. Peter didn't have to wonder if Jesus was mad at him, and Peter went on to become a leader of the early church. Just as Jesus forgave Peter, God wants us to forgive others. Friends, forgive one another. Remember, that's the bottom line. Even though we love our friends, forgiving isn't always easy. It's hard to forgive when a friend has done something that hurts your feelings, but we can ask God to help us. So this week, if something happens and someone hurts your feelings, Forgive them, okay? Go to it with God and have God help you to be able to forgive them. Let's go ahead and pray it out. Dear God, thank you for the examples you've given us over and over again for forgiveness. From the way that Jesus forgave Peter to all the times that you've forgiven each and every one of us. We have seen incredible examples of how friends forgive one another. It still isn't easy all the time, Lord. We need your help to be able to forgive. Please give us what we need to choose forgiveness and help our friends to be open to forgiving us too, especially when we mess up. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope that you have a fantastic week. I can't wait to see you in class in just a few short weeks. Have a great day.